Well, welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name's Dr. Clayton Johnson, I'm the host for today's episode. Joining me in our podcast studios is Dr. Claire LaFay. Dr. Claire, welcome to the podcast. An honor to have you on. We're going to talk about the internship programs um, and certainly intern season, so it's a very timely podcast. But before we start to hit the intern programs, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thanks. I'm happy to be on play and thanks for the invitation. Um, it's certainly a timely topic, just like you said. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Dr. Claire LeFay. I'm an associate veterinarian at Cartledge Veterinary Service, um, where I, my primary role is obviously a swine veterinarian. Um, I work mainly in the system swine herds, but also do some family farm work as well. Um, and then with our, within our organization, I also am in charge of the vet internship program. Um, where I am in charge of everything from recruiting to project implementation to uh, developing their abstracts that are submitted for uh, various research project and award consideration. Claire, let's start with big picture. Why would an organization like Carthage or any other organization in the pig industry want to have an internship program? Sure. Um, there's, a, there's a number of objectives that you can answer with a internship program, Clayton. Uh, the first of the ball, uh, first two actually can be very, uh, that we consider selfish, but also um, cast a broader net for your organization. So it, one, it develops a, a recruiting prep pipeline, not only for vets, but also for different positions within your organization. So that could be production, um, research, corporate positions. So a lot of times students, I found, don't realize that what the scope of agriculture encompasses is IT, accounting, um, logistics, all of that is involved in what we do, right? Um, so it establishes a pipeline. Um, two, it can answer a question. So what what question do you have that needs to be answered? And that can come across several departments, right? Everybody has things that they want to zone in on. Um, it might be a, a question regarding uh, from the veterinary team regarding what vaccine strategy is best or what strategy is best in regards to prismic gravel practices. Um, but could also be, you know, what what water nibble is the best for a specific type of uh, production stage in a pharaoh barn. Um, so that that's the second reason. And the third reason really is is a broader scope for our industry is just getting students in into barns and exposed to um, pig production and and pig vets and pig people. Claire, I hear from people from time to time that young kids today don't want to work. They're just not willing to put in the effort. Uh, rather sit around and play video games all day. What's your sure. experience working with young people in internship programs? You got to stand there with a hot shot to motivate them every morning, or are there some no. little young kids out? Uh, from my experience, Clayton, it being a, a later that I've had very reasonable uh, students um, participate in our vet internship program and in our internship program um, and they, they've all um, come with very good attitudes. Um, I will say there's some skepticism in the beginning. Um, they, some of them don't really know what a big black box of, of swine farms are and once they get inside they're, they're happy to participate in the daily operations of the farm and see what we do. Um, they're happy to get access. Access is a big thing. Um, it's, it's gotten a lot better kind of in the post-COVID era but there definitely was a, a time period there where it got tighter than we were already already were in the industry. Um, so that was difficult for students to gain access to to our farms. All right. So you told me, I uh, believe in the value proposition. I think there might be a, a young person out there to make a, make a bet on as an intern. Where do I find these people? Where do, where do I go to recruit? Sure. Yep. Uh, you want to be aware of recruiting timelines. Um, so you can recruit within your own organization um, locally. So you might have part-time students that want to move to full-time already working in your organization for the summer. So you can certainly look at those folks first. Um, they might be college students that want to stay in the industry or students really that are transitioning out of high school into college roles and want to continue to develop. Um, one caveat I'll note there is that don't be afraid if somebody works in one department to transfer them to a different department to help get them a different experience. Uh, so recruiting locally, then you can cast a broader net into academia. Um, one program that I've used very successfully and actually was a program participant myself is the Iowa State um, Swine Veterinary Internship Program. So that 
that program is available for Iowa State and actually encompasses multiple species now. So there's, there's dairy, I believe, and beet that are also a part of that program. Um, so there's that one to be aware of. Recruiting timelines I, for specifically the swine bet program that I mentioned, um, you'll want to be aware of recruiting uh, advertisements for that in early fall. Um, otherwise, you could potentially miss out on some really good candidates that applied through that uh, organization specifically. So uh, academia or your business partners. So you could look internally at your business partners. So that could be within your nutrition nutrition scope of your business or within the production scope of your business um, to uh, focus on those areas and recruit out of programs that are come from academia or um, students that have an interest in those fields, but maybe connected to that other entity that is a business partner. What's the age typically of interns that you're looking at? So for the vet internship program specifically, um, I usually try to recruit a second year vet intern. They usually have general anatomy um, under their belt and are looking to to get uh, their feet feet wet in sample collection and really the practical aspect of veterinary medicine after sitting in vet school um, through the anatomy classes and just general physiology for the first year. Um, that being said, that's vet specific. Certainly for production, research, lab, um, corporate positions, you could start looking at students as early as uh, following the first year of their college program. Um, and that could be either community college or uh, four-year institutions. I think it's important to look at both. Um, really high quality candidates can come through community colleges um, as well as four-year institutions. So uh, yeah, uh, you could start there. Very good. Um, generally, the difference between just a summer job and an internship is a project. An intern yeah. is going to have something that's a little different than the day to day work or just a summer job, right? Um, you know, there are lots of or lots of kids who can get a summer job at a farm, but the internship somewhat implies that you're doing something unique. And a lot of times, it's a research project. It may be the first research project that some of these students have worked on, even better than your students. How do you? Yeah. Reduce the project. You know, you mentioned talking with you know people in the business about what do we want to work on. You land the plane on what project you want to do. How do you introduce that project to the student and not totally overwhelm the, the scope and scale of what you want to ultimately accomplish? Yep. So I think one of the things that uh, we have to kind of back take a step back from what you're talking about, Clayton, is some of the students may come with a project that they have a request request to work on. Uh, so community college students uh, may be required to do an internship program. Some four-year student, four-year institutions require an internship, especially in the agriculture programs. I um, mean, they have a, may have a specific question they want to research. Um, vet students are sometimes interested in a specific disease. So to to come back around to your question, how do you how do you really grab their attention? Um, I like to have them involved in the project development aspect of it. That way, they can own everything from the development of the project in its infancy to completion of the project and wrapping up any data analytics and producing an abstract if that's required. Or maybe it's, you know, simply presenting to the group internally. So that might be presenting at a business um, or just within your department, whatever the scope is for that student. Um, there's obviously a difference between uh, what you're going to require out of a, a graduate degree student that's completing an internship with your organization. Um, versus a, a first year freshman. How about uh, trying to integrate them into your company, trying to, to get to know the students a little bit beyond just the projects? Do you think there's value in doing uh, social interaction, some sort of company level onboarding with interns, or is the project generally so big and important that they have to start on that right away and that's going to be the focus of the summer? Yeah. Um, so I think it's the social aspect is definitely part of the internship experience. And you want to make sure that you create that um, as part of the overall objective is to introduce them to um, not only their intern or peers. So if you have interns that are coming to your business as a group, um, make sure they all know each other, get them involved in meetings where they can participate with department heads or other people within the business. Um, if you have a single intern, make sure you're doing the second as well. So then take them with you, introduce them to department heads, 
um, getting them involved in the business so they don't feel that they're kept up on the outskirts just looking in the entire summer. Um, you can kind of create a, a glass house, so to speak, if you have them just kind of looking in from the outside. You really want to bring them into your culture, show them what your business is all about. Um, like I said, selfishly, they're, they're a recruiting pipeline, so you can... You want to show them that the good of the business, but also make sure that they see the the real world aspects. Um, that everything that we do in the pig business is is sunshine and um, smiley faces, so to speak. So we want to make sure that they they see what we deal with on a daily basis and um, know that you know that our industry encompasses some of those those bad things, such as disease and other things that other industry would also see. Very cool. Well, thank you, Claire. Um, certainly do a wonderful job leading our internship program here at Carthage. I think you've done a wonderful job educating anybody out there who's either got an intern who's going to show up in a month that they got some planning to do, or yeah. that, you know, thinking about starting <laughs> up an internship program. If you do it right, it's valuable yeah. in your business. And I think you've yeah. done a nice job laying out step by step what you need to do to do it right. Good. Well, thanks for the invitation again, Clayton. Thanks for coming on the podcast and to our audience. Thank you very much for listening to us. Um, please uh, subscribe to the podcast and uh, visit us at our website, swinehealthblackbelt.com, if you haven't already. Um, we really appreciate you being a part of this. Claire, thanks for coming on and to our audience. Please have a great day. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research. Mm-hmm.